Hello and a very warm welcome back to Hughes Nursery and we're here today right by the Ruth Stout method bed and the thing that happened with this was I started it quite late and I think it was around about mid-April I planted these potatoes and the really annoying thing that we always seem to get with our climate is that blight, potato blight seems to appear really early and you can see that we've definitely got something going on with these potatoes so Unfortunately, we didn't have that much rain either, which was such a pain. Um, the only thing, the only watering they had was a bit in April and a bit in May. And then I think it was back in June, I watered each plant for effectively five seconds and that was it. So there hasn't been much rain and because I planted them late, um, they have flowered. That's one positive. I'm not expecting much, but I thought I'd film it, show the process and no matter what happens, we will see what what the results are and it'll be quite interesting so just to give you some context for this area this is all actually we have three raised beds here and i decided to rip them out and start adapting and doing some tests with growing with hay as a mulch and to try and adapt it for the uk climate so i'm getting mixed results and i'll be sharing more results later on in the year with this area but I think this first year is a lot actually about building that fertility because there wasn't much fertility at all and and hopefully as the hay breaks down it'll be providing more fertility so what I'm going to do now is just begin pulling the hay away and we're going to see if there were any potatoes under here they might be really small they might be big they might be none at all but it's an experiment and the odds are against us, so let's see how it's done. So let's have a, uh, a look under here. And, uh, oh, I've already spotted a potato. So that makes it a bit more promising. Okay, that's not too bad. You can see what I mean though, being quite small, but that was so simple. As you can see here, yes, they're nothing huge. But we do have potatoes and these are, these are going to act as new potatoes, really nice, nice and small. Hopefully there'll be a lot of flavour, but I'm just so happy that there's actually a crop from this because in all honesty, I wasn't feeling very positive about it at all because I was looking at the state of the plants. It had a really good growth stage, but then I felt that it was really going to be struggling with a lack of moisture. And I'm just feeling around here. I can't really feel that much moisture but the thing is there is something and if you dug down this deep into a raised bed you're not going to find any moisture at the moment but I can feel it you, usually this would be all dusty if it was a raised bed you know it, it's not too bad um, so I'm just going to continue pulling up these potato plants one by one and we're going to see how it works and I'm going to be also honest and I forgot where I put the the sowing plan, the planting plan for the varieties, but I'm not too worried. I think the most important thing this year was to just test it out again because we did it where we've grown potatoes and you might want to see the video growing potatoes a lazy way. We had a raised bed, put the potatoes on top, covered it in hay. The thing about that with the raised bed is that there's already a lot of fertility and there's space for the potatoes to grow. What we didn't do was maybe we didn't quite put enough hay on top. And when I'm looking here, there's not a single sign of green on the potato. Even though we probably had two or three potatoes which were green, at the moment, this is looking very promising. And another really cool thing is I'm looking down and it looks like the the hay is beginning to break up and this hay isn't going to i'm not going to move it i'm just going to harvest the potatoes and leave the hay here and hopefully over the the rest of the summer and then the autumn and the winter and spring next year it's going to be continue to break down and I'm going to continue adding layers of hay and that's exactly what Ruth Stout did with her method. She continued to add old spoilt spent hay onto an area which did actually have high fertility to start with but hopefully that progression of creating more high fertility is going to be very useful. So let's have a look and pull up some more potato plants. One of the most important things that you need to do when you're growing food is to observe and compare with other years and something that I'm observing with with this is that whenever I'm pulling up these new potatoes, um, for example, I'm getting quite a few small ones. 
like these. So, so these are these are much smaller than usual. And I think what it's telling me is that if I planted these, say, a month earlier, and perhaps if we had a bit more rain, then these will be a far more developed. So I'm kind of kicking myself about the weather, but that's the thing. I can't do anything about it. I've got to accept it. I've got to move on and just continue with it. Um, but then again, if we had loads and loads and loads of rain, that could have affected it and made it perhaps too saturated for the potatoes. So, so at the moment, it's really interesting to see these potatoes just really want to grow. They want to produce loads. I've got hundreds of small potatoes, but if they were given a chance with a bit more moisture, and I had to be very strict with this because I wasn't actually, I had no knowledge, in fact, of this summer being so hot. So what I did was I thought, I'm not gonna water it at all, apart from five seconds per plant, which is virtually nothing. Um, so it was really interesting to see how almost the opposite had happened because I was expecting loads and loads of rain. I haven't got that, but I've still got some degree of potatoes and they're not incredible. <laughs> the harvest is tiny, but what it is proving is that you can grow potatoes quite easily in some soil and some hay. And, and that's really exciting. And, and already I know that next year I'm gonna be doing this again, but I'm gonna make sure that I'm gonna start it earlier. There's some quite decent size. So far it's been, uh, it's been okay actually. It's a lot better than I first thought. And it's actually really satisfying to be able to, to just pull them out and, and see potatoes on it. Even though they're not huge, um, we, we, we know why. I think we know the reasons why anyway. And well, it's my hypothesis anyway. But I'm so happy that we're just at least getting potatoes and, and there's a, f a pretty big pile now developing and I'm, I'm going to weigh you all the potatoes actually just to, um, just to show you what, what it's like and also I'm going to weigh the biggest potato as well and that'll be interesting uh, for future comparisons because I think the great thing about growing your own food is that you always have the opportunity if you're growing in the same location over a period of two or more years to be able to look at what you're growing and compare it with different years and perhaps you could begin to see patterns develop such as rainfall or when you planted something even down to the kind of varieties these will have a huge factor when it comes to growing things and also when it comes to how much they produce ah got a couple of big ones here Not too bad. And so here we have the final potato plant and I'll tell you something interesting. It's just started raining. It's typical, isn't it? When you really, really want something, you wait, you wait, you wait, and then finally it appears. Um, but it's too late for these potatoes because even if we were gonna have a lot of rain to try and swell them up, the blight had already hit. And the best thing to do is to either just cut off the stems and you can actually leave the tubers in the ground or just harvest them. And I didn't really know or think that the rain was coming so I went ahead and harvested them. But next year, hopefully it'll be different. And so this is it, the, the final final potato plant. It's, uh, it's so easy to be able to just go in and, and harvest the potatoes without having to use to use a fork or a spade or anything it's just to to go around rummage around search for it get your kids involved it's so exciting for them to to look through and see the potatoes but i think this kind of is a really good final harvest to to describe things so the first thing i want to say is you can see how many small potatoes there are on this plant i know we've got a few bigger potatoes and I think that's that's roughly how it's all been. Some plants have been better than others, but we've had so many small potatoes and it looks like they all just want to get growing, but the moisture just isn't there. It isn't there for them to swell. And with blight taking over, it's a bit of a shame to have to do this, but it gives me hope. That's what it does. It gives me hope. So I'm just going to tidy this up a little bit and then we're going to head down and we're going to weigh the potatoes. As you can tell, it's just started pouring it down, which is absolutely great. 
I've just come back from weighing the potatoes and what I did is I actually split it into two different categories. One category was for the really good quality potatoes where there are basically no blemishes and I'll be able to store them for a while. And there was another category which might have had some slug damage or some kind of blemishes or cuts on it which need to be eaten quite soon. And the results of the two categories are to use quickly was just over a kilogram, so two and a half pounds. And then the really good storage category is um, just under three and a half kilograms. So that's about 7.7 .7 pounds. And that comes to a grand total of potato weight of four and a half kilos or just over 10 pounds. Now, of course, I would really want more than that, but considering all of the odds being against us this growing season, I'm really pleased with it. And also the fact that we planted these a month after the most of the potatoes and still harvested them around the same time does say a lot. Now I think a few of you might be wondering whether I had any green potatoes. So I decided to put any green potatoes that I found into my pocket and I've got one single green potato. Out of, out of everything there is just one and and I think that's quite amazing. And I think that all, all came down to giving a very heavy mulch of hay. So what I did was instead of, if you're growing potatoes the traditional way, where you earth them up using a rake and you hill it up and you just create more space for the potatoes to grow. What I did instead was I got a load more hay and covered it over the top of the potato plants. I effectively smothered them actually, which caused the plants to grow up towards the light. And also what it does is all that thick layer of hay serves as a really good barrier to sunlight. So the fact that out of all of that, and I've got one potato showing a bit of green, I'm really pleased with. I really hope this video has shown you that you can grow potatoes at home really easily without having to dig or without having to use any single hand tools at all. It's so simple and I think the things that I've learnt from this year I can adapt and change everything for next year to ensure that I have a much more productive harvest but all in all I'm pretty happy with it and you know four and a half kilos of potatoes is actually quite a lot and there's a lot of calories in there. So if you're trying out this method or you're trying out different methods perhaps using leaves instead of hay then I'd love to find out all about that and if you have any further questions or comments regarding this method if you want to know anything at all which I forgot to mention then please do not hesitate to ask down below in the comments section so thank you very much for watching and see you again soon goodbye